Welcome to the Insom Insider. Welcome to the Inside. This is the Insom Insider, your source for Oracle Apex tips, techniques, methodology, and really wherever that discussion takes us. I'm your host, Monty Latchley, coming to you from an undisclosed location just outside of Houston, Texas. And Sharing the screen with me again this week is my good friend and member of the In Some Family, Michelle Scamini. Hello, Michelle. Hey, Monty. At the helm, keeping us on time and on task, is our producer, French Canadian Mark Rule. It's Thursday, April 30th. Hello, everyone. Hello there, Mark. Uh, thank you for spending a piece of your afternoon with us. Uh, we're coming to you from uh, what, through the miracle of Zoom. Uh, whether you need video conferencing, web conferencing, uh, webinars, uh, screen sharing, or chat, Zoom is rated number one in customer satisfaction according to an OCA, OCA 2020 report. Michelle, after uh, delivering a product spot like that, I should ask for compensation, don't you think? Absolutely. I don't know where that came from, but <laughs> I hope Zoom will be calling. <laughs> How's the quarantine treating you? I mean, I can't complain. We're, we're actually having some pretty nice family time, but I know it's been a really tough time for, for lots of people. So looking forward to getting back to some sense of normalcy. I don't know. Hopefully it won't be too long, but you know, how people, about you? Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I tell you, I'm missing my, uh, I'm missing my barber appointment. I need a haircut pretty bad. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a few days away from going full mullet. JavaScript in the front, PL SQL in the back. Uh, you know, it's, it's, people say that this is going to be the, you know, things are never going to go back to the way they were. You know, maybe it's just the optimist in me. I, I kind of think that things are going to, to get back to normal. Uh, it's going to take some time, but I, I do think things are going to get back to normal. I do think that there's going to come a day where, you know, we're, you know, this vaccine's in place and all that we're not going to be in bubbles the rest of our life. I just, I just don't see that happening. We're, we, we have to have this interaction. We, we crave this kind of interaction and it's, we're going to return to that. I'm, I'm, I feel certain. I hope so. Yep. Thanks for the words of encouragement. Well, uh, you know, this time last week, uh, we, we set sail, uh, not, not on a three hour cruise, but on a 10 week journey. Um, we didn't really know, what to expect. This was our first foray into this, um, but the numbers, people showed up big time. And this week, the numbers are even larger. So, you know, we, we think we've tapped into something here. Uh, until we can meet face to face, we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to do this in this form, in this fashion. Uh, the main reason, again, if you missed last week, the main reason we're doing this is, is we missed the interaction we've come to enjoy. Uh, when we do meet face to face at the various conferences, um, for those people who maybe weren't able to join us the last week, Michelle, can you quickly explain to them the platform, uh, you know, the live streams, the forums, the recordings, that kind of stuff? Yeah, for sure. I'll do it real quick. So first of all, welcome everybody. Welcome back. Those who were with us last week and welcome to all you new folks who are joining. Um, I just want to take a couple of minutes to tell you what we're doing. So we're running these streams weekly. We're doing 10 in total. Uh, so this is episode two. We've got eight more with a little caveat that we're actually doing extra sessions in uh, French and Spanish. So those won't be replacing our, um, our English sessions, uh, but we'll be adding them to, to the schedule. So I wanted to share, make sure everybody knew about the portal. Um, this is where you signed up and that's where really your your main resource for all things in some insider you have the schedule and our community form so let me just share my screen real quick um let me make sure i'm sharing the right one that does not look right just a second Are you guys seeing my screen in some insider? Yeah, we do see it. Perfect. Okay. So this is where you signed up. Um, 
And when you click on your icon, if you haven't logged out, uh, if you have, make sure you log in, you get to Insum Insider. And there are two things that you'll see, the community forum and the live stream series. The live stream series is where we are publishing the entire schedule. So we're still working some of the sessions out, but everything that has been firmed up and set is available here. Um, now, if you've missed any of the past sessions, uh, every, after every one, we do upload the recordings. So they're available here in the portal. So for example, if I click on last week's session, the productivity tools with Jorge and Martin, um, you can see uh, we've actually uploaded the full recording there. And we've actually, we also include show notes. So that's a really good resource for you. If you miss any of the sessions, don't worry, everything gets recorded. Of course, we do love for you to join us live, uh, but not to worry if you can't. Um, so that is for the live stream series, just a couple of notes on upcoming sessions. So next week we're doing a session on code review with Rich and Lance. Then we've got a in some insider en español on May 12th. So for all our Spanish speaking friends, don't miss that. Um, then we'll be doing a session with Hayden and Vincent on adding third party design libraries to Apex. It's definitely a not to be missed session. Feel free, take a look at our schedule. Lots more coming up, but this, these are the sessions that have been firmed up. Beyond the actual content of the series, we've also got the forum. Now, this is where we invite you to come anytime during the program, but particularly after each show. If we haven't had the chance to answer any questions that you have, please don't hesitate. Come in here. Uh, Neil and uh, Vincent will be joining us there after the show today for at least 30 minutes. Ask any questions that you have, feel free. Um, and feel free to post any comments throughout the program as well. So if you click on the forum, there's sort of the whole feed similar to a Facebook feed, and also uh, organized by topics. So today uh, we'll be using the Git Workflows Apex version control and Apex CL topics. So uh, please feel free to make use of this forum. Any questions, comments are welcome, and we hope you make use of it. So Thanks. Monty, I might have gone a little bit longer, but that's what I wanted to share about the, the portal. No, no, that's good information. Also in the show notes for last week, uh, for those of you who were on the show last week, uh, the demo, one of the demos that Martin D'Souza did, um, you know, it, it wasn't working during the time we were on the air. Uh, we found out immediately after we closed the broadcast that it was uh, uh, Zoom had negatively uh, impacted his demo. So he's recently blogged about it and the blog is in the show notes. So if you wanna, if you wanna try it for yourself, if you have an iPad and you're uh, using Mac OS, you can do the uh, the screen capture, screen mock-up stuff that uh, that Martin demoed uh, week one. Um, I thank you again, Michelle, for uh, for getting everybody up to speed on the platform. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, now move on to the main event. Uh, you've heard me describe uh, Vincent Morneau as a rising star at Insum, but that's really not the case. It's no longer accurate, and I say that because he. He's arrived. Um, you know him from Material Apex, uh, from Nitro, uh, and most recently from Apex CL. Just a wonderful, wonderful, talented young man. I'm happy to work with him and learn from him uh, on a daily basis. Uh, he's joined today by Neil Fernandez, who probably could be described as a rising star. Uh, one of the things that Neil has taken on internally at Insum are the, uh, the techno scrums and the techno lunches. These are internal for in, uh, at Insum, and they're not really all that different from what we're doing with the Insum Insider. You know, it's 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 small segment, uh, small uh, sessions. Uh, you know, that we would talk about things like code review, talk about things, uh, some coding conventions. So uh, we do that internally. Uh, Neil is uh, taking on taking on that role, and he's doing a fantastic job. Uh, with it, but uh, we're in for a great time uh, today. Uh, Vincent and Neil are going to get into repositories and deployments. Um, so get your popcorn ready. Before we start, we kind of want to see where everybody kind of currently sits. Um, we have a poll ready. Michelle, is that uh, can can Mark uh, send that poll to to the attendees? Sure. Oh, there you go, Mark. So we're going to let you fill out. Um, Fill out that poll. Let us know kind of where you sit. Um, Vincent, Neil, 
Thank you for agreeing to participate and sharing your, your knowledge. At this point, I would say, guys, take it away. Thank you, Monty. Now I'm seeing the result of the poll just yet, or is that available at the end? Yeah, what we're going to do, uh, Mark's going to let these answers come in. And then uh, whenever you want to see those uh, results, just let Mark know. And uh, he can either throw them to the screen or he can actually uh, explain what those results are. Mark, have All you right. got enough? Have you got enough answers already? Do you feel? Yeah, I think we do. Yep. Um, yeah, great. Maybe uh, just another 15 seconds for everyone to. Let's, uh, let, let's actually wait until for a little bit until we give the results, because yeah. I want to introduce um, the question, I want to talk about the choices and what I think about them. So f first of all, thank you, uh, Monty and Michelle and Mark for the nice introduction. And uh, thank you, Neil, for joining me as well. So Neil. Thank you. Um, you pretty good, thank you. Um, so today we're gonna talk about a topic that is very broad, very, very vast. We're gonna talk about control was the original title for this conversation and we decided to flip it to a slightly more focused title which is repos and deployments um, because you know one of the first challenges that you're going to have when you start a project any project not just apex projects is the first one of the first challenges is going to be what where are you going to put your code and the obvious answer that most of you uh, probably know is you should put it under version control. But the, the, the challenge is which one? There are a couple choices available. And um, if you don't put it under version control, you probably know that you should. So today we're going to talk about one of the ways that we can put uh, Apex source code under version control. But I want it to be clear. This is just one way. There are many ways, and there is, I would argue, there is no best way. So, uh, Neil, do you agree with that statement? If, if, if you don't, feel free to challenge me. Yeah, no, my take on it is it, there's not necessarily better, but it's just different. There's different needs, right? So whatever suits your, your needs, and we found one that works pretty well for us. That's right. So now I'm going to share my screen because we decided for this session that we weren't going to go the slide way with the typical uh, webinar style presentation. We're just going to have a conversation, Neil and I, and I'm going to share my screen and actually go through the process of creating a new Apex project under version control in what we consider best practices. So uh sharing sharing here there we go. all right so perhaps mark now is the is a good time to show the results from the poll all right now oh, there they are okay so that's a question interesting. right you know what i'm really happy about those results no one said what is version control. It's good. That's because I couldn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So most people, but it's not a it's not a majority of people. Most people are using Git uh, right now. Um, at forty four percent. The next uh, group is SVN at twenty eight percent. We've got 22% at nothing yet, but looking at options. So hopefully that uh, conversation will help you decide. And 6% uh, said other. Um, so fortunately for us, um, we're gonna go with a Git approach today. And more specifically, it's not just Git. Git is the framework on which you, you, um, you put your files into uh, and that tracks the evolution of your code. Git is the platform, but then you've got hosting services, all sorts of hosting services for both Git and SVN, one of which, one of the most popular is GitHub. So today we're gonna start 
a new Apex project on GitHub. So, okay. Um, what we decided to do, and this is the result of plenty of people internally at Insum, uh, including Jorge Rimblas, Martin D'Souza, uh, myself, and Neil, and others. Um, we published a public repo that is under the Insum Labs uh, namespace. And this repo is called a starter project template. And what this is, is essentially a blank slate with a couple of folders, traditional folders that um, you would use in the context of Apex developments. And um, we've got a little bit of automation in there to help you create automated releases. So today we're gonna go through those, um, this structure, how to use it, how to um, create your own project and so on. So, Neil, anything you want to say before I go ahead and create the project? No, uh, I think you're all set. Just if you have any questions on the folders, it's all documented in here. So we'll probably not go through that, but um, you're all set. And just a little bit more context for this conversation. What we're going to do is we're going to create a project um, right now, right here, and we're going to add Neil as the contributor to the project. And we're gonna do a couple of interactions together and Neil's gonna do some work in the background so you can see how we work together in a Git repo. So the first thing you would wanna do when creating a project is going to this starter project template, which the URL will be available after this session. And GitHub has this nice feature which allows you to use this template and create your own repo based on this template. So I'm gonna go here and um, use this template. I believe you have to have a GitHub account, but I, I think that's all. And I'm gonna name this repository demo time. Um, and this is gonna be a public repo. I'm just creating this repo. And um, it's generating it off the code from the template. So you can see that here, it's generated from Insum Labs starter project template, but it's a blank slate. It's, it's, a, it's an initial project with nothing on it except uh, the template files. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to settings because I wanna invite Neil to work on this project. So under settings, manage access, it's asking me for my password. And from the manage access tab, I'm gonna invite someone. Neil, remind me your username. I think it's N Fernandez. Just Neil Fernandez, first and last Neil. name. That's all, yep. Okay, so now I'm inviting you to the repo. Got it. And I'm also gonna do something special because for demo purposes, let's say that Neil um, is someone who, okay, I'm just gonna say it, Neil, no offense. For the context of this uh, demo, you're a junior developer. I wanna see everything you're doing before you push to this repo. So I wanna protect my repo. From, from Neil injecting anything in there. So I wanted, what I wanna do is go to branch and, and I wanna protect the main branch. So I would, the main branch in a Git repo is usually master, that's the main branch. And I would require pull requests, so that means Everything Neil is trying to push to the repo has to go through me to review before accepting. Okay, so we're gonna do this. And now no one else besides me has access to the main branch, which gives me a lot of control. Um, all right, now the project is created. Uh, I've set up the access. And um, 
I'm actually going to take a few steps back because I've, pre I've created a separate repo with uh, numerous files in there. Um, oh, hold on. Before we go there, Neil, I'd like you to talk about the different folders in the template and what do you see um, their purposes? Yeah, so your Apex folder is going to hold your application export and some other things that we're going to get into later, but that's the main purpose. Um, the biggest ones that we're worrying about here are the packages, the views, the triggers, and our release, right? These are, so these database objects that we have here. Um, the triggers, the views, the packages, we're going to define those objects in there and save those the package file, the view file. The release folder is probably one of the most important ones. And inside of there, it's going to have everything we need for this release. We're going to have a script. We're going to have a DDL and a DML folder. DDL is going to hold all the DDL you run for this release and DML will hold all the DML just for this release. So it's all pertaining to the current release you're working on. So all your tables. Do you, mind, do you mind explaining DDL, DML? What's the difference? Yeah, data definition language versus data manipula manipulation. Uh, so DDL is going to be your altered tables, define, defining def like sequences. Um, and DML is going to be your updates, your merges, where you're updating, uh, manipulating those tables, the data inside of those. Awesome. And then we've got a couple more folders that you might or might not use. Like if you have any documentation, you could put it here. Uh, if you are using any external libraries, you can put it here. But today we're really going to focus on the release creation script um, and how it ties all the packages, the views, the DML and the DDL together. That's what we're trying to do. So this is the project I just created earlier. But um, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to switch to a little more advanced project that has a couple of packages, views, and so on. So um, how did I name it? In some dash insider dash demo. Yeah. Gotcha. OK, so that's essentially the same thing. But I wanted to have a little head start, and uh, we added one package in there. So if you look under the package subfolder, you're going to find one package specification, one package body. Um, there is also a view in there. And um, under release, we will find one DDL script which is essentially an alter table. And we will find one DML script, which inserts into the table. So let's start uh, development. And um, we're going to create a simple requirement. I know that there's a problem in one of our packages. I've read the code. It's not good. It's failing at runtime. So what I'm going to do as the project manager, I'm going to go to the issue panel and I'm going to create a new issue for Neil. And this issue is big. It's a big bug in the main package. Not working. So I'm giving no, no description. I'm going to assign Neil to this issue. And that's all. So Neil should be receiving an email or something notifying him from the newly created issue. And he's now in a position to address this issue. Yep. So right now I'm fixing it and I'm going to go ahead and make a comment in my commit with the number of this issue that will automatically tag my uh my fix to the issue so i'm done i went ahead and did it okay and not only that i'm all done so okay i'm gonna go ahead so i'm gonna go ahead and create a pull request i'm gonna tell him i'm set and i want him to pull my changes in 
to his main branch. I have a separate branch, not so I can do whatever I want on this branch. It doesn't affect the master branch. And since I'm all set, I'm going to tell him he can merge these into his now. So one moment. So you're creating a pull request that is essentially attached to a piece of code that will solve the issue. Exactly. So I'm all set. OK. So now I refreshed, and I now see a new pull request uh, right here. So I'm going to go here and see what this is all about. Well, first of all, it says this pull request will fix issue number five. Issue number five is the issue ID of the issue I just created. So let's look at this and um, analyze what Neil has done. So 25 seconds ago, he's, he pushed this pull request. It contains a commit. Um, and most interestingly, what I want to see is the content of that commit. What exactly has he changed? So Neil has done a couple of changes um, on this package. You added a parameter and changed a bunch of things. And this looks good to me. So you changed the package body and the specification file. All right. So it looks good. I'm going to go back to the pull request and I'm going to say merge it. So I confirm it merges. And um, one additional thing I can do is because Neil has created branch and he's done the work in a separate branch, now the work is done. He will most likely never use that branch again. So I want to make sure to delete the branch. That just cleans the repo. And um, I want to inject one thing right here is you see, you see the name of the pull request is fixes number five. Uh, there's also a comment that I put there that says fixes number five. And that comment right there is actually what links this pull request to an issue. So just, just keep that in mind. It's not the title above, it's the comment. So you'll see when he goes to the issue that this pull request was linked via this. Excellent point. And to prove it, I'm going to refresh now. And this is, should go to zero. And the issues number is also down to zero. And if we go to the issues list, I'm going to go to the closed issue because I want to illustrate what you just said. Um, so that was the issue that we were trying to solve, number five. And by the fact that Neil has linked the pull request to the issue, we now see a very clear history of Neil mentioned this issue two minutes ago. He closed it and um, we're done. Gentlemen, we uh, have a couple of questions that came in. If uh, I could uh, put them to you. Only one. <laughs> uh, the first one is um, any advice to import an existing, uh, an existing schema into the system, schema or schemas? Neil, do you want to grab that? I'll let you take that one because that, that, that all depends. There's a lot of depends on that question, but one approach that you could do if you're interested in creating fresh scripts for deploying to a new environment, you could grab the DDL from SQL, De SQL modeler, SQL developer, and um, create a bunch of DDL script for version one of your Git repo. That's, that would be one way. Um, obviously, pull all the packages, right? Pull all the packages, the views, the triggers. That's right. That's right. All right. Okay. Uh, there's a second question and is, um, I use SQL data modeler as the base for all our projects, but I don't see any folders specifically to save these changes to our design. Well, you know what? That's an excellent point. And we should have an ERM folder or something for the modeler files. Absolutely. That's a great point. You know what? I'm going to go right now to the starter project template 
create an issue for it and we will fix. Add a new subfolder for data modeler files. And a, sorry, a related question. In SQL Developer, we see a connection to Git. Can this work fine? I'm gonna hold off on that uh, question. I, I'm not clear on the answer. Okay. And I've, I've seen a lot of conflicts in the past when trying to do it. So perhaps it was me, but I, I've never been able to successfully make it work across a whole team of developers. And there's some very well, well programmed uh, tools specifically for Git, for GitHub. Um, that focus just on that, that work very well. So I think people typically opt for those. All right. So just to, to prove what we've done, now I'm back to the code of the repo. Uh, hold on, that's not the right one. I'm back to the code of the repo recreated and Neil has attached a pull request to the issue. We merged the code, and just to prove that it um, did, we're gonna go to the package subfolder, and uh, we see that it was updated seven minutes ago with uh, the new pieces of code. Now is where it gets interesting. So now we've done a whole bunch of changes. We've, let's say we've added a bunch of views, a bunch of packages, all our objects are ready for release. So now I'm actually going to quit GitHub and I'm gonna go back to a local copy of, um, of this in my VS Code environment. Um, here's in some insider dem demo, I've cloned it locally. I'm just gonna make sure it refreshes with the latest files. And now the idea is that we wanna move we want to deploy our repo maybe to a UAT environment, pre-production, whatever. So we want to create the release script that will do that for you. So under release, uh, right here, we've got a special file called release.js, which has the magic for turning all of your packages, views, and all of your files into an automated release. So the way to use that is on the command line, I've positioned my command line to the release folder and I'm gonna use Node.js, that's a prerequisite if you, if you wanna use our automated release script. So Node calls the release.js logic and we wanna generate a release.sql file. The release.sql file is going to be deployed on a separate environment. So, first of all, before I generate this, I'm going to show you the current release.sql file, which has a basic structure of what to do for logging the execution of the script. Uh, here's the version of my script. And at the end, we're recompiling the schema and deploying applications. So that's a very typical script. What's gonna happen now is I've got those two placeholders, auto replay start and end. And our script, which I'm gonna run right here, is gonna automatically inject all the necessary files in here for my release to be deployed. So let's roll that back. I'm gonna leave that window open so you can see what's gonna happen. Now I do release.sql, oops.sql. And I press enter. Now my release file was modified. Everything in between start and end, this, has now been injected with our DDL, our views, our Packages, packs, body, triggers, and the at the end are DML. 
So that script is now ready to be run on other environments. Neil, does that uh, make sense or did I forget something? No, that makes perfect sense. Um, I just want to note that you probably notice packages uh, and views and such that you've already created will get inserted into here every release. So you'll always be compiling your files. So this kind of forces the developer one to work out of files because you will be, if you just did a database change and you didn't store it in a file, when this release comes, it will overwrite those chains. It will, they won't match and it will overwrite it. So I just want to make note of that. We're going to try to speed things up because we're going to go over that's that's sh for sure. Um, yeah. uh, Vincent, now, Neil, we have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, perhaps only we can, one, only one, only one. Okay, one at a time. Uh, I have 15 developers working on a single Apex application in dev environment, and might be three, four developer uh, that do changes in the same package. But I want to release migrate only two developers' changes into production. Is this doable with the Git version control approach? It is, it is doable, but you will not be able to use this auto replace script because this grabs everything from everyone. It is a complete release script. If you want to do partial releases, then you're going to go, have to go with something a little more uh, manual. So maybe, maybe this uh, trigger should not be released. Well, so it, it's something a little more manual in that case, which, which is fine. It's necessary in some cases. Or you could also, right, not pull in those changes from those developers if, if the, right, the pull requests, you have the ones that you want to go out and you haven't done the other pull requests, then you'll be good. If you've done Absolutely. all the pull requests, then you run into the, what Vincent just said. Absolutely. Okay, now we're missing a very, very important piece to our uh, release management process, which is our Apex application. A lot of the development happens inside the Apex application. So we're gonna go back to GitHub and I'm gonna create a new issue because something is deeply wrong with our app. And uh, this issue is about page one is deeply broken. Fix it now, please. <laughs> I've seen I've seen these before. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and still assigned to you, Neil. Okay. So as no. you do your thing and fix page one and send the pull request, I'm gonna explain. Um, why in typical Apex projects, this is hard. This is because when you do Apex development, most of the time at the end, what you've got is a SQL export file. You export your app again, but it, you exported it with everything else. All pages, um, all the IDs, it's not version control friendly. I know in Apex 20.1, um, they were able to split that huge file, but it's still not good for code review perspective. So Neil, let me know when um, you're ready. All set. Okay, so Neil has fixed page one. We're gonna go to pull request and you're fixing Apex. Okay, what has happened here? Well, this time there's three commits and four file changes. How is that? So first of all, looks like you added, I need to refresh this. Yeah, right now you're seeing all my commits going down and I changed three things in the application. One's a dynamic action. Yeah, let, you let, let's, let's start with this one. So it looks like you've changed a piece of code of JavaScript code in the dynamic action on page one. So I can see that here. You also changed the icon 
from one of the buttons on page one, read under the dashboard region, and you changed one of the SQL queries of one of the reports on page one. And that was exactly what we needed. So now I'm looking at this, it's very clear what's changed. A SQL query, an icon, and some JavaScript. So I'm going to merge this just like we did last time. Now you might be asking, how did Neil put those files into GitHub? Because Apex does not allow you to do, to do that uh, out of the box. So we're gonna show that right after. But first of all, I wanna merge that because I think it, there are good changes. Emerging and deleting the branch. Okay, here's the second part of our conversation. Um, I want to introduce you all to the to a tool called Apex CL. So you, right now you can go to apexcl.dev and read about what this tool is. But at a very high level, Apex CL is a tool that allows you to extract the definition of an Apex application into very, very small files that contain only the relevant information that you need for versioning control your Apex code. So again, going back on, on GitHub, what I was able to see with Apex CL was very specific uh, changes in very small components of Apex, a dynamic action, a button, a report. How do we do that? Well, Apex CL is a command line tool. So I'm gonna open up my command line and Neil, do you mind for the sake of demoing, do you mind doing another change to page one? Any, any kind of change? No problem, I'll do it right now. Let me know when it's change. done. All done. Okay. So in this repo under the Apex folder, instead of having just an Apex export file, F101 um, with um, all the release script from Apex, instead of having just that, we have a hierarchical view of all the different files and components of Apex, which is all the pages, page one, two, blah, blah, blah. And I can go down to the page level and I see all the branches, all the dynamic actions, all the regions. And I can also see all the subregions, the buttons and so on. So it's one file per component. So when something changes in Apex and we run Apex CL, we're gonna be able to see exactly what's changed. And same thing goes for shared components. I've got all the hierarchy for fill options, plugins, themes, so on. So Neil, you've made a change to the Apex app, right? I did. Okay, I'm gonna go in our Apex environment and I'm going to export the app because I want a fresh copy of the application. So F101, is the application that Neil just modified with some new changes that I'm not aware of. If I go to my command line now, Apex CL is used, um, it's, it's very simply to use it, simple to use Apex CL on our cloud service. And you do that by typing Apex CL on your command line and then cloud, which will use our cloud service to process the files. And then um, F for the input file that you want to send, that's the application export file. And we want to send the F101.sql. 
so which is located on my download folder F101. I just downloaded this file. So now let's run this. Apex CL tells me, what do you want to export? Uh, the entire Apex application, maybe a single page, or maybe just the shared components. Well, I want to export the entire Apex application. So this takes a little while. Hmm. I'm going to do it again. Something happened. Um, this could take up to 20, 30 seconds. And usually, um, the files come back and they are now extracted onto your file system in a very clear way. Now we're going to see the power of Apex CL. So Neil has done some changes. So it took 26 seconds. And VS Code now indicates that there is one new change to my a repo, which is a native JavaScript code um, under a dynamic action event on page one. So here's what Neil changed. He changed it from hello world to hello world again. And this is achieved with Apex CL, a command line tool that uh, you can use on your command line. So one of the one of the things I want to talk about today is that we made Apex CL available for free uh, starting today on our website. So you can go to apexcl.dev and get it for free. You have to create an account and you'll get a license for free, and that is free until uh, mid October. So six months. And you're going to get documentation in here, uh, videos on how to use the tool, and achieve a similar results um, like this. So I can run Apex CL for myself and see the changes from Neil, or Neil can run Apex CL himself and push the change to the repo so I can review it as a code reviewer. Again, Neil, did I miss something here? Nope. Oh, gentlemen, uh, perhaps we could um, go back to the two questions we'd, uh, we'd not answered yet? Yes, please. All right. Uh, the first one is, um, and this is related to when you were uh, working in GitHub. Um, what about handling images or supplemental files in a release? Uh, thinking along the lines of things that would be included in, for example, workspace underscore images in Apex? It's a great question. Neil, it's off to you. Yeah. Yeah. So when it pertains to uh, supplemental files, CSS, JavaScript, um, there is a folder in there, and as he's showing, called www. And under there, we have typically images, CSS, and a JavaScript folder. And we create a file with our JavaScript, put it in there, and inside of your application, you reference that file, and typically you store it in um, workspace in your works in your static application files with the application. You have options when it comes to this, but this this will be the source of that, and this will always match what's there. And there's a tool called Apex Nitro, which we're not going to get into here, but the purpose of that is for developing these, these CSS and JavaScript files and then keeping them in sync with your Apex application. And Vincent is going to show you, I guess, really quick this. No, I'm, I'm not going to show it because that, okay. that could take half an hour on its own. But Yeah, um, because you know well, that you have to constantly upload them and it could get real. T if you are using a file, constantly having to go and upload every change you make just kills so much development time. So this combats that. Okay, and um, the other question that we had is, uh, I think was related to a very specific moment uh, when you were working in Git, but um, is this every object in the repo or are there are the changes 
are the changed objects detected somehow? Hmm. Probably uh, lost some context on that. Good, so you can take that one. Well, from my understanding, all the database objects would be on this repo. Oh, and uh, what the release script does is it it automatic, automatically reads all the available files on the repo and creates a release script out of it. Uh, the participant uh, noted that this is during nodes, a uh, node during node. Right. Okay. Um, so going back to the node script, what happens? What what the release.js file does is it it reads all the available files in the package subfolder, the view subfolder, the trigger subfolder, um, synonyms, everything in here. Uh, it reads the files from there and it pulls it into the deployable script release.sql. And we're doing this because it avoids human error of forgetting scripts, uh, for forgetting a package. Now, you can't forget any anything because you've generated your script before deploying. Obviously, that's assuming people always modify files at the repo level and not directly in the database. All right, and we have uh, one more question. Uh, any recommendation for to add an AOP folder for the templates? I think your www is where this is going to go, right? Because uh, typically your files for AOP, you usually put in static application files. So I would suggest a folder in there. But Vincent, do you have a comment on that? No, I, I do the same. All right, that's all the uh, questions that we had so far. Well, this was fun. Uh, I just want to go back to the ApexCL website. I highly encourage everyone to have a look. It's free. Uh, you can download it for your operating system. You'll get a license uh, instantaneously. And um, I guarantee you that if you are um, interested in looking at the content of your Apex application, this is a very fun and powerful way to, to, do, the, to do so. Fantastic. Thank you so much, you guys. That was, uh, that was great. Monty, have you joined back? Yep, I'm here. I'm here. And uh, just like last week, I learned an awful lot. And, um, you know, it's uh, what, what, would, what the takeaway for, for me here is that uh, if you want some of this tooling, it's available now for free. Uh, free is a very good price. And that's, uh, you'll, you won't get a better price from anyone anywhere. So, um, Michelle, if you want to just kind of reiterate how they, how they go about getting their license and, and the process uh, and, the, and, the, and the limit. Sure. I mean, I think Vincent said it all. We were, you know, this, it, these are tough times for everybody. Uh, we've had our cloud version of Apex CL ready for a while, but it just didn't seem like the right time to, to do a big launch. And we really want to see how we can help the community as much as possible. So this in some insider series is, is part of that. Hopefully you're finding that helpful and useful and we want to do the same with Apex CL. So we really invite you all to, to head over to the website, give it a, give it a test run. We've incorporated it into our practices here at Insum. It's really changed the way we work. I think it helps us do better quality work. Um, wanted to say thank you so much, uh, Vincent, for all the work that you've put into this amazing product. And I'm excited to, to share it with the community. So please go ahead. Uh, give it a try and we hope that you uh, that you enjoyed as much as we do. Yeah, yeah, if you I, like I, it, oh, I was just gonna I say, should. if you like it, let us know if there's some enhancements, some things that we missed. We had some great questions today uh, mm -hmm. during this session. You know, let us know, let us know what you like about it. Let us know how we can make it better. Absolutely, and I just wanna point out, this is our first cloud release of Apex CL, but we also have an on-prem version. So if you need it, um, 
embedded inside of your environment, you can do so as well. Um, both versions are free right now, so you can go and grab it from this uh, website. Yep. Yeah, that's important. I have, that's I have important one, one thing to add. So I would um, take Vincent's lead on, on most anything when it comes to Apex, but not in the way you write your tickets. If I were on the receiving end of a broken page or big bug, I think I'd just send that right back to you. So let this be our, our safe harbor statement. This is not the way to write a good ticket. You should see what I receive. Yeah, I was about to say I the believe same. it. <laughs> I believe it. Well, again, thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Michelle touched on it earlier in the, in the session. Uh, jo join us next week. Um, the same bat time, same same bat channel. We're going to be joined by In Some Zone, Rich Sewell and Lance Eaton. Uh, the topic of the day is going to be uh, code review. On uh, May 12th, the following Tuesday, we're going to have our first Spanish program, and that will be hosted by In Some Zone, David Lopez. You're not going to want to miss that. And two days later, on May 14th, the Hudson Hornet, Hayden Hudson, will lead a discussion on third-party design libraries. So the downbeat will remain at 2 Eastern for all of those sessions. Uh, again, you're not going to want to miss it. We, uh, based on the numbers, we think we uh, are giving you some, giving you what you what you need as far as these these sessions go. If there's some uh, some topics that you'd like for us to take on, uh, we'd be more than happy to to consider those. I don't think we're ever going to run out of content. You know, we we <laughs> kind of started this, uh, you know, with ten weeks in mind, thinking that that would kind of get us through this this kind of sticky point with the COVID, and then things start, you know start creaking back into normal but you know uh, all indications are that we're onto something so if you want to if you want this to keep going if you want the party to keep going um let us know let us know we need to know that uh the content that we're providing yeah. is important to you yeah and head on over to the forum if you've got any questions that we didn't have a chance to answer here in our session we'll be happy to keep the conversation going and and use that for any topic suggestions that you're interested in as well Yep. Yep. Uh, it seems like I always think of questions that, you know, right after the, the program would shut down, then you're like, wow, I, should, I wish I should have asked that. I wish I could ask that. Go to the forum. Uh, you'll see Vincent and you'll see Neil uh, there uh, hanging out, answering your questions in the same fashion that Martin and Jorge were uh, doing last week. So uh, it's, um, I think the link to the forum is in the chat. Mark, can you make sure that that's, uh, that that's present there? I will. All right. Um, again, we, we'd like to get, get in and out with this content. Um, but you know, when, when you guys keep asking questions, uh, we're going to keep answering them. So uh, we'll try to keep everything as concise as possible. Um, but we do appreciate the, the ongoing participation. Uh, at this point, Michelle, unless you have anything else, I think we're going to close. No, thanks so much, Vincent Neal. It was a great session. And uh, thanks, Monty, for, for hosting and catch you guys in the forum. You bet. Let's put a fork in it. We are done. Thank you. And we'll do it all again next week on the InSum Insider. Thank you now. Bye, everyone. Well, see you guys.